back to you. So the lady in the back there, thank you. The gentleman in the black t-shirt over here on about three rows from the back. Yeah, Adrian's got in. Uh, the guy there in the striped t-shirt and then the guy behind him. Thank you. The final four questions. Thank you very much. That's all right. Oh, that's okay. So I can well, go to the question. No problem. I, I just want to ask if somebody would please answer the question about what happens to the proceeds raised by the sale of these 12 freehold fire stations. No one answered that question. Okay, thank you, madam. The gentleman over here. Sir, my name is Damien. I'm just a resident in the local area. So I can hear you. Got a couple, couple of questions. Um, again, mainly about the modeling. It seems to me that there are figures and values which haven't been accounted for in the actual model. Have the, the company which has brought these figures forward actually been accountable or have had their figures checked from people it does affect, such as mathematicians at universities? Um, second question has been um, again, with 500 firefighters less available to do community work, how many actual hours does that take away from the community to prevent these? by saving issues from um, going forward. And another question has been that in the last five years, everybody in the room has been suffering from a lack of income, from money, from savings, investments. And on the social side, we've seen now people are attacked by a bedroom tax. Again, these figures won't have been included into the, the modeling which has been done by a third party, which if I'm entirely truthful, I don't trust. I think figures have been fudged. We haven't seen a single slide affecting what the response times are of a third pint to any of these buildings which are above four floors, which for their health and safety reasons, the firefighters need predominantly three appliances to attack this fire. And again, it's all about the attendance times of when they put handbrake on but without that third appliance at a building which is over four levels, the work will not start. We will not even begin to start to be safe here. And again, it just raises the, the last question that the density of inner London has been growing exponentially. There are high-rise buildings, there's more resident areas, and also businesses. They've started to grow up around the banking sector and the inner park. Our issues are not with the outer rim of the edge of London. It's the inner centre. We should not be cutting or moving appliances around. We should be increasing the budget available. We should pay an extra five, ten pounds to maintain the service which we need, which is now out of date in the current model. The values and the figures just don't add up. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, the gentleman, the squad too, sir. Uh, yeah, man, my name is uh, Greg Edwards. I'm a serving firefighter at Clarkenwell Fire Station. Uh, <laughs> when we talk about uh, fire statistics, we're a fire and rescue service. The 2004 Fire Services Act included extra responsibilities that recognised the job that we do. Uh, now, in Clarkenwell Ward, I noticed that when we had the borough statistics up, we didn't break it down wall by ward. Uh, Clarkenwell Fire Station covers four wards, two in Islington, two boarding into Camden. Now, to give some idea of the impact that closure of Clarkenwell will have, uh, we're talking about an additional two minutes, seven seconds, and this is on the brigade's own figures, for the first fire engine to arrive, which will actually take it to six minutes, 28. Now, I'm using their own figures here. Now, we, we talked about fires, but if you're lying underneath the lorry when you've been knocked off on your bike, another two minutes waiting for us to turn up to jack up the lorry and get you to safety all within that golden hour. These things all count. Now I've been to more people under lorries and buses than I care to think about. More actually than I've been to fires with fire fatalities. Um, so the whole issue is we've been talking about fires but if my uh, statistics are correct Islington Borough actually hasn't seen a big reduction in RTA fatalities and RTA uh, injuries. So obviously we're here for everything. We're not just here for the fires, we do everything. So my issue to you, uh, I suppose James in effect, is you're talking about London-wide, six minutes, you'll still be getting that. 
Well, in Clerkenwell Ward, and obviously taking on board the statistical point that Ron Dobson made, uh, we get to over 6 minutes 28 for the first fire engine to arrive. We're very limited in what we can do with one fire engine. So the whole point is we're standing in a high risk, high dense area, highly densely populated area. And there's a reason why these fire engines are here. It's because they're needed. It's not just for the fires, it's for the people. <laughs> There's this uh, a new concept called marauding terrorism that the fire service may be getting involved in. It's a whole range of things. Let's not just stick to fires. Let's just admit that you're going to, by making these cuts, you'll make the service for London as worse. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Barry Edwards again. But I've been reading the report, the, uh, the consultation document, uh, while the meeting's been going on and listening to it as well. Um, and I think I, I think I now understand what the way you're saying you're trying to meet these uh, these cuts. This I still maintain politically um, um, caused cuts. Um, basically, you're looking to spend more money on prevention, and in that way, you reduce the total number of fires on the incidents that happen, and accepting that that will save more lives than the number of extra lives that will be lost. Because in any incident that occurs, you will be more likely to die because of the extra response time. But you're hoping, you're hoping, you're, no doubt you've got the confusing models that say that you're right, that the, you can prevent the incidents to save more lives than the number of lives that are actually lost because you, you will, once a fire happens or an incident happens of any sort, you're more likely to lose your life in it. Than, uh, than previously, and that seems to be the way the document is going. And I'm, it seems to me, looking at the, the, the consultation document, the one we're being asked to do, this is the way that you're actually going to sort of justify that people want what you're trying to do. Because the, the, among the early questions get asked, there are a lot of questions about the preventative work. It's things like, are the targets for home fire safety visits challenging enough? And they're hoping that what happens is we all say, yeah, that they're not challenging and that they ought to have any more, and then you can say, well, this are the, the response of the consultation argues for a lot more preventative work, and we can only do that if we cut back on actually responding to incidents, so we have to take the fire into the way to make you safer, and it's what you asked for. <laughs> First, if I may, because I think your interpretation of what you put is fundamentally flawed. Um, the the um, the uh, the idea that there is uh, there is a trade-off that, that the two are mutually exclusive is is uh, a flawed assumption. So if you think uh, if you think through the process of how a fire works, um, uh, uh, many of our fire fatalities uh, um, at, uh, at night, for example, when people are asleep. Or, um, People have come home uh, late, had a few drinks, and started cooking, etc., etc. Um, and actually, uh, as the commission said, many of those uh, many of those fatalities happen because of smoke inhalation, um, and uh, uh, so the person has died long before a fire becomes even visible or called through to us. So actually, in many instances, in many instances, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the speed of response will not save that person's life. So it's not a the point being is that the preventative work with regard to uh, putting smoke alarms, um, uh, educating behaviour, changing behaviour so people are, are uh, not as dangerous. I mean, there were a big thing when candles became very popular, a lot of candle fires, there's been a lot of public in, uh, education about that, that as a diminishing risk. Chip pan fires are diminishing risk. So if you can prevent the fire from igniting at all, then you will save lives of the person that might be saved by the speed of response. So the point being, so the, so the point being, they are not, they are, uh, I, was, I was asked a very specific, quite technical question, I'm giving a very specific answer. The, you're not, you're waffling. Um, so the, 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 the contrast that you're making is an artificial one, because they are not mutually exclusive. You can uh, save lives using a sp uh, by the use of smoke alarm, and that would be the biggest driver to prevention of loss of life due to fire. The speed of response then becomes 
about the preservation of uh, property and the minimising of damage because the person has been saved and has probably self evacuated. So, so it's not a trade off between one or the other. It's a bat it's it's a matter of it's a, it's a matter of delivering both. You're not listening. Okay, uh, Commissioner? Yeah, just, just a couple of points. I'm going to go first one about the project of the and fire stations. It's been, it's been raised a couple of times. Um, the fact is that not all the stations that have been proposed for closure are freehold, so we're looking at an income from all of them. Uh, the second thing is that the vast majority of our fire stations are freehold, um, and it's been the ones that are proposed and not, not, all, not all freehold ones proposed. And in terms of the process, for the sales, the weather, it is, it's, a, it's a fact that the, any process from the sales are not been affected. Budget over the next two years, so actually, any proceeds from the sales will be additional in that. But I would like to think we'd be able to spend on the existing stations if we got to improve the facilities there. Well, we want to keep the job. I was going to say, I'd like to think that we'd be improved. I'd like to think that what's actually going to happen. In terms of the issue raised about the third part, I'd like to think that's a problem. It's probably going to be a good effort because we've got the information today about exactly that factor. And we've got the information and it's in the plan and we've got the information and it's in the plan and we've got the information and it's in the plan and we've got the about third of class attendance times um, at power level. Um, it's true to say we haven't got third of class attendance times at Warfare White at the moment, but I'm going to look into that and see if we can provide some more information around it. But that's something specifically can ask for. But it is a fact that we know that half the incidents we attend in London anyway are dealt with by one fire engine. Now, it's not to say that you need the second and third of class to run in there quickly because you do. But the fact of the matter is we do feel half, over half the incidents that we're in with, with one fire engine.